So I want to just extend the example from the last video. That's why I was kind of laughing because it's kind of opening a bag of worms. But not really. I, I want to uh, throw two lambda expressions in here. In the last video we just did one, but now I have two. And I just did plus equals two here just to make it a little different than the I plus plus. But basically both of these lambdas are capturing the scope of I here. So each one makes a closure. Uh, and then I return it, and then we invoke it here, and all that kind of stuff. I want to convert this. I want to desugarize it the same way that the compiler desugarizes it. So, so here we go. If you remember from the last video, we need to make a a nested class. And remember, remember, we only do this in the case uh, of a closure. Otherwise, we could just unwrap these to normal methods inside of our class. But now that we have a closure, we need to make a nested class so that that nested class can store each instance of i for every time that this function or method give me action is called. So let's do it. Class, and the compiler calls it display class. I'm going to call it gibblygop because it really doesn't matter what it's called. It's The name is hidden to us. Uh, and then we need to move the declaration of i up here. So let's do that. And then we need to move, essentially move both of these these lambda expressions up there. So I'm going to grab this and just move it. And the reason why I'm moving it instead of just typing it up is I want you to see that the compiler literally just cuts and pastes a lot of this and then massages it a little bit. So let's let's massage it. We're going to we're going to call this um st not static. It's going to be void and the name is unknown to us cuz it's a lambda expression. And lambda expressions uh don't have a name. Okay, there's no name here. Nameless functions as we call them. Uh lambda is a Greek letter. Uh Lambda calculus, you can go look that up if you want to. Uh, let's do the other method here. Different name. Maybe I should name it something intuitive just so the example makes more sense. But let's just do this. I plus equals 2. Okay, so if you look at this class by itself, in fact, I'm going to take the liberty of, of isolating it on the screen just so you look at it by itself. The closure, the closures aren't really magical, that magical if you think about it. It's, I have a field here, an instance variable, and when I call this function, this code executes on it. When I call this function, this code executes on it. So nothing too magical going on here. But now let's bring the bring this back up. And uh, now remember the the last video we only had one method, but now we have two. Notice I moved both of these methods since they're closures of i. I moved them both in, both into the same class. So it, uh, an interest. Well, I'll get to that later. Let's let's ret plus equals. Well, now ret plus equals has to. I can't just say new. What is the name of this class? Disploop, whatever. Uh, oopsie. Let me. Man, I'm going all over the place. Please forgive me. Let me zoom out a little bit so I don't have to scroll as much. Let me grab this and say new that dot s foige. Oh, I didn't make them public. 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 So s foige, whatever. So remember that's. This is the first lambda expression, so I'm just replacing that lambda expression with this. Except I'm not going to invoke it. I'm just going to... It's a delegate, right? So I need an instance, an object instance, and the method to invoke. So there we go. But I can't do this new here because if I if I knew up this one here, and then knew it here, dot, dfo, whatever, well, these are two distinct instances. That Thus... That wouldn't be the same i variable. It's two instances. So we actually have to store this away like we saw in the reflector code in the previous video. So I'm just going to say var uh, temp gets new displooch whatever. And then here I can just say temp. Uh, I'm going to use alt and drag a box and say temp. Very good. So now let's just run this F10. F10, F10, F10. Run B. B's eyes. Oh, I said five. Yeah, I initialized it to five. Very good. Uh, and then it's a chain. So then I, so five plus plus is six, and uh, six plus two makes eight. And then we go here, and now we're going to run a's, and a five goes to six, and six goes to eight, and then a's going to run again. So a's i is eight, and then now nine, and then goes to eleven. And then we do a do it again. So 11 to one, plus one is 12, and then 12 plus two is four. But then remember b's value b. We only executed b once, so its i is still eight from this previous execution. So so on and so forth. And anyway, 
you can see here you see here that works just fine for the closures. That's how the compiler does it. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to actually do this on, on the video, but I want you to think about something that would be kind of interesting if I could set this up correctly. Let's get rid of all this and, and get rid of this. And then I'm going to do, uh, uh, let's do int i gets 0, int j gets 5, and then I'm going to do 3 lambda expressions here. Ret plus equals paren paren i plus plus. Ret plus equals paren paren uh, arrow j plus plus. So this lambda is capturing j, this lambda is capturing i. And then let's make it even more interesting. Ret plus equals lambda i plus j. Okay, so, so this lambda, oh well, <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe the, we we need to since the lambda it's expecting void to be returned. So let's do i plus plus and then j plus plus. It, if you notice there, I, I had a, a raw expression and then this expression returns a value. That's another caveat of lambda expressions is since this returns a value, it's returning an int. So the return method return type of this lambda is an int and it's saying, hey, actions don't have return types, they're void. So the way I'm going to get around that is just do the plus plus, which which can return an int, but in this case it's just going to return void because it's it's the same as writing plus equals one. Anyway, yada yada yada. Okay, so this lambda expression, we're going to have to give it curlies because there's two statements in this lambda. But basically this lambda here captures i and j. First one captures i, second one captures j, and the last one captures i and j. So a good little exercise for you would be to unwrap this the way I just unwrapped the other one before. And if you can't figure it out, uh, download the reflector or use Ildasm, either one, and pull it apart and, and get into this. But it's kind of fun tinkering around, seeing all the sugar that the compiler does for us in the background.